Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for what I think will be a wonderful discussion. My name is Diana Gray, and I'm the president and CEO of the Hydrocephalus Association. I'm so thrilled to be speaking to Steve Tonelli, a commissioner on the Bergen County Board of Commissioners in Northeastern New Jersey. During his eight year tenure as a Bergen County Commissioner, Steve has dedicated a large portion of his time to the renovation and the redevelopment of the Bergen County Park System. He was instrumental in leading and approving the first ever Bergen County Parks Master Plan and in the construction of new state-of-the-art ball fields, tennis and pickleball courts, as well as new accessible gym equipment throughout the county. So what a great success record, Steve. So welcome, Commissioner Tonelli. Thank you very much, Diane. I'm so glad to be with you today. And uh, more importantly, would partner with the Hydrocephalus Association. Um, we both know that September is Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. Yes, it is Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. So Commissioner Tonelli, tell me why you're so passionate about raising awareness. What, what's your personal connection to hydrocephalus? So um, September 1st, four years ago, uh, the week before my grandson was born, uh, my daughter-in-law had gone in for a checkup. Uh, it was supposed to be a routine checkup and all of a sudden the bells and whistles went off and everybody was called to the hospital and uh, the emergency was that uh, the initial, initial diagnosis was that the baby probably wouldn't survive or have any type of quality of life based on what the initial scans had shown. Um, so obviously there was, it was crazy heavy emotions at the hospital during the checkup. The following day we followed up with a specialist and happily the diagnos diagnosis wasn't as grim as it originally was. Uh, they said that once the baby was born, they were going to do actually do a C-section on Thursday to, to take the baby so that they can get to it right away. And Friday morning was his first surgery where the shunt was put in. So when you're sitting there and they're telling you about hydrocephalus, you know, you hear about MS, you hear about cancer, you hear about uh, Alzheimer's. What is hydrocephalus? So naturally, you're jumping on the computer doing as much research as you could do to try and find out. And I'll be honest with you, it's scary. When you start Googling things, you don't, they don't ever tell you calmly the effects of anything. It's always the dramatic and the, the terrible. So we were all a nervous wreck going into Friday. Yeah. And sadly, so many families have experienced what you experienced, but I'm glad to hear that your grandson is doing well. What is his name? So his name is Landon Noah. Landon Noah. He's as um, active as any child I've ever been around. <laughs> he up to date has shown really no limitations. I mean, I, I always in the back of my mind wonder because if you see the, the MRI, the initial MRI that they did to the MRI now, even the neurologist says that his, um, his MRI is of almost of a 100% healthy child. So, which is, he's even amazed that it actually bounced back to where it bounced back. But the initial, with the initial uh, fluid in the brain and the compression, I'm, I'm always worried that there's going to be some type of sign that we have to make sure we find soon enough to, that we can help any way we can. Sure. So many of our families are always worried about that, if there will be another surgery. And so fortunately, many don't have to worry about that, but sometimes they do. So again, thank you for sharing your story. It sounds like when you talked about getting on Google that prior to this situation, you really had never heard of hydrocephalus before. Is that right? It's 100% correct. Ne never heard of it. Um, and especially I was amazed to find out that it doesn't just affect newborns, how it affects, you know, others in the population, whether it be seen our senior population, our veterans, you know, that it was amazing to, it was amazing to get the research that I was able to get to see what the, um, the effects were. You know, that's a really, really good point. I think so many have, if they have heard of hydrocephalus, they, they've heard of premature babies, right? Getting hydrocephalus, but the, sadly it is true that we are talking about a condition that affects over 1 million Americans. 
and is the leading cause of brain surgery in children. I'll say that again because I think it's so important. It's the leading cause of brain surgery in children, yet most Americans have never heard of it. People have heard about Down syndrome, by way of example, which has a similar incidence rate, but not hydrocephalus. So we have a big job to do in terms of awareness. I think part of the challenge is that it affects people differently. And for many people, it's kind of an invisible condition. So you can't tell right away that someone has hydrocephalus. And you're right, anyone can develop hydrocephalus at any time. Um, and I know most people don't realize that, that it can happen to anyone at any point in, in a lifetime. Some people develop it in utero, some are born with it or develop it in childhood, and others develop it as adults for a variety of reasons, such as a brain injury or a tumor or an infection. And some people, which, and this is a, a category of folks that, that often get misdiagnosed, some people who are over the age of 60 develop something called normal pressure hydrocephalus or NPH, which many times gets misdiagnosed as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. And interestingly, this condition also affects members of the military. It's estimated that around 180,000 veterans currently have NPH, many of which are most likely undiagnosed or misdiagnosed with Alzheimer's or something similar to that. It also members of the military can develop hydrocephalus as a result of a traumatic brain injury. In fact, studies show that about 14% of the US service members who've had a TBI could develop hydrocephalus. So, Commissioner Tonelli, I know that you're a strong advocate for improving veteran services. Tell me about the work you've done to help the military in Bergen County. So thank you. That's really interesting how it affects so many in our community and uh, even the military. As a son of a military veteran, improving veteran service is one of my passions here in Bergen County. I've worked hand in hand with our Bergen County Division of Veteran Services to expand affordable housing for disabled veterans and run a social media program called Bergen County Veteran of the Week to highlight Bergen County veterans who serve our country and our communities. Uh, we also, Bergen County was the first and I believe still the only county in the US that has zero homelessness for veterans. That's amazing. So I know that the Hydrocephalus Association provides free support and resources to everyone impacted by this condition. Can you talk a little bit about how you are helping military families? Absolutely, and congratulations on the work you're doing to help military families, that's Thank impressive. You. So in 2015, with the help of our hydrocephalus advocates on Capitol Hill, in conjunction with our congressional allies, we were able to get hydrocephalus listed as an eligible condition for the Department of Defense's Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program funds. It's also known as the CDMRP because it's a mouthful. And one of the aspects about this that's so interesting is that you cannot receive these particular DOD funds unless you have advocated and been approved by Congress to be on that list. And so that's the, the advocacy work that helped to make this happen so that our scientists had access to these funds. So the grants awarded through the CDMRP have led to breakthroughs on a range of disorders and conditions impacting the health and lives of the US military. This opened up a substantial pool of research dollars that were previously not available to our research community for research into the brain and brain injury that can lead to the development of hydrocephalus, but also benefit service members who sustain a TBI while on active duty. In addition, we've been working hard to ensure veterans have access to telehealth benefits. For those veterans living with or at risk for developing normal pressure hydrocephalus, having access to telemedicine would allow them to access doctors with experience and expertise in the proper diagnosis of NPH so they can be treated properly. 
Well, that's that's an unbelievable job, and you really need to be congratulated um, to get anything done on Capitol Hill. I know it's mon <laughs> I know is monumental, but so you're everyone involved should really be commended. <laughs> so, you. as a grandfather of a child with hydrocephalus, it's disconcerting to learn that there's no real cure for this condition, and that the only way to treat it is through brain surgery. I worry about the future. We've talked about that a little earlier of my grandson and the many others living with this condition. How is the Hydrocephalus Association helping to change the future of hydrocephalus through its investments in research? That's an amazing question, and I'd love to talk about that. We are committed to changing the future of hydrocephalus. Um, and research is actually one of our top priorities because we know that by funding high quality research, we can deepen our understanding of this complex condition and explore pathways for treatments that will lead to a cure. In 2009, we began investing in high impact research. Now we're proud to say that we are the largest private funder of hydrocephalus research in the country, investing over $11 million in research and awarding 40 grants to brilliant scientists. This is the most exciting part, Commissioner Tonelli. Already, there are eight drug therapies being tested that could have a major impact on people living with hydrocephalus. Wow. So, Commissioner Tonelli, we are so pleased to be partnering with you and the Bergen County Board of Commissioners this month, which is Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. What do you hope to accomplish by getting more awareness out there? So, first and foremost, awareness helps raise the profile of this condition that not only affects infants and children, but, but may be the cause of a reversible dementia. Education also allows family members to advocate for their loved ones, to find support networks in their area. It's my hope that our partnership allows Bergen County families who have a loved one with hydrocephalus to know that they're, they're not alone and they have options and support. In conjunction with education, awareness also increases research funding. As mentioned previously, the hydrocephalus awareness, I mean, I'm sorry, association is investing over 11 million in research and grants to help find a cure. However, the more individuals are aware, the more likely they are to continue supporting research into hydrocephalus, which is equally as prevalent as Down syndrome, but doesn't receive the same kind of funding. I just want to thank you guys for inviting me here today um, to begin the dialogue. I hope this is the first of many interactions that we're going to have in the future. Um, I certainly would like to partner with you guys any way we can in Bergen County and also in the state of New Jersey. I do have some some reach throughout the state to um, maybe uh, it's funny because I do have some congressmen that I'm friendly with that I work with regularly that we could also use to uh, help lobby any of our causes. Well, that is a very generous offer, and we will absolutely take you up on it, and we'll count you one of our newest and best new volunteers out of New Jersey. So thank you so much for your help. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all of you for watching our interview today in Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. We hope you enjoyed the dialogue.